Not long ago, Benedict and I did an episode of Beat Diabetes about non-sugar sweeteners. And we found two particular ingredients that really spoil them for diabetics and those that are wanting glucose control. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description. Well, one of the things that's fascinating to me as I post these Beat Diabetes videos is to simply read the comments and see what people have to say. And when we did an episode about non-sugar sweeteners, boy, did we get the comments. And I learned a lot myself, not only from the results we got from the tests that Benedict and I did, but from your comments. And people were sending in all kinds of comments, and a lot of them were very helpful. And one lady sent in a link to a glycemic index chart about all the different sweeteners from sugar to the non-sugar sweeteners, stevia, aspartame, all of them were on this glycemic index chart. And so I took a look at it and learned a few things myself. Not only that, but I had people write me in and say, well, Splenda raised your blood sugar quite a bit, but I use liquid Splenda and it doesn't raise mine at all. So I did some investigating and uh, I found a, a place on the internet that this lady linked to uh, that was the glycemic index for all the non-sugar sweeteners and also sugar. And I made a couple copies for me to refer to in this guide. But one of the things I found fascinating, as we saw that everything except stevia in our five tests raised our glucose a bit, and Splenda seemed to raise it quite a bit. But according to this chart, uh, gluco uh, excuse me, Splenda doesn't raise glucose at all. It has a zero for a glycemic index. Uh, sucralose, of course, is the ingredient behind Splenda. And that got me curious. And then I put that together with what some of you guys said about the fact that you try liquid Splenda. And others recommended different sweeteners. And I started buying some. And I, I did a test with the Splenda. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. This is liquid Splenda as opposed to this kind of a thing, which is... Um, a powdered Splenda, and then this, which is what I we did our test with. These were actually Splendas I picked up from an IHOP restaurant. So uh, it was very interesting. Now, people reported that Splenda does not raise their blood sugar as long as they try it in a liquid form. So I went to the grocery store and I got some Splenda liquid, and I tested myself. And guess what? Before my test in the morning, and I, I made it a lemonade similar to the one Benedict and I were testing. Before my test in the morning, my glucose was at 97. And 50 minutes later, which was the standard that we use to test ourselves, 50 minutes after drinking that homemade lemonade with the Splenda, the liquid Splenda, my glucose was, can you guess? 97 once again, no rise at all. So... I may not be the smartest guy around, but I kind of figured out there's a big difference between this kind of Splenda and this kind of Splenda. And I asked myself, self, what could be the difference between this and this? They both say Splenda on them. Well, combining that with this, which tells me that sucralose has a zero on the glycemic index, I realized that there's something in this that is not in this, something in the powdered form. And that is maltodextrin, actually two items, dextrose and maltodextrin. Now, according to this chart, although sucrose has a zero for its glycemic index, maltodextrin <laughs> has a 110, about as high as it's possible for a food substance to have. That's actually higher than pure glucose. Maltodextrin is a nightmare. And guess what's in here? Maltodextrin. What's in here? Maltodextrin. And then also, this has dextrose, 
and that has a 100 on the glycemic index. So that, again, is like pure sugar, maltodextrin is actually higher than sugar on the glycemic index. So when this was jacking up my blood sugar with four packets, and it, not that it went over 200, but it, it rose too much, I realize now it was not the sucralose doing it. It was the maltodextrin and the dextrose. So I know people have health issues about Splenda, and some of them say it's not good for you. Some say, well, it'll make you crave sweets, and there's all kinds of arguments. But the argument that it's going to jack up your blood sugar is not valid as long as you get the liquid version, or if there is such a thing, a powdered version that has no dextrose or maltodextrin in it. And guess what? Most packets of sweeteners, the kind you get at the restaurant, or the kind you buy in a big bag like this, they're going to have maltodextrin in them. Now, this doesn't have the dextrose, but it has the maltodextrin. So, again, that is a, a nightmare for diabetics. That's a problem. The short story of that is when you go to the restaurant, you see these pretty colored packages of non-sugar sweeteners. Sugar is always white. And then you've got the pretty pink, the blue, the yellow. They are, they're almost certainly going to have maltodextrin. So that's a problem. Again, you can bring your own sweeteners. Now, the one I used, the stevia, and by the way, this actually has more erythritol than it does stevia. And why they call it organic stevia instead of organic erythritol, I don't know. But this has more erythritol, but it does have stevia. But it has no maltodextrin, it has no dextrose, and it did not spike blood sugar at all. And this is also an acceptable um, substitute, this whole earth sweetener. And I've used this. I bought a pack of a thousand of these a while, well, quite some time ago. This has stevia, but it also has uh, erythritol and monk fruit. And so this has no maltodextrin. Now, here's an interesting thing. This brags about stevia. And... When I bought this, and I've had this for a long time, and I really haven't used it in a long time, and it says stevia, and it says made with stevia extract. Well, they're not lying. It's true. It has stevia in it. It is made with stevia extract. But when you turn to the ingredients, you find the number one ingredient. And remember that whenever they list ingredients, the the largest ingredients are always listed first. They go from order of the most to the least. So maltodextrin is number one. Stevia comes in second, a stevia extract. So this is going to have maltodextrin, not a, a good thing. Someone kind of summed up really what everybody was saying in these comments, at least the ones that knew what they were talking about, with these words, you just have to check the ingredients. <laughs> Let me say... A hearty amen to that. So, with the liquid stevia, or excuse me, the liquid Splenda, before the test, 97. After the test, 50 minutes later, 97. I haven't even tried this one. This is a liquid, no-calorie stevia, and it has no maltodextrin. In fact, it has erythritol as the number one ingredient, so I don't know why they always brag about stevia when... The number one ingredient oftentimes is erythritol, although erythritol is not bad. It, it uh, has a very low glycemic index as well. Let's see if I even see it on here. I, yeah, it has a, a, a glycemic index of one. <laughs> so you're not, you're not too bad if it has one. I went out and bought a couple other acceptable, uh, substitutes and I, I've been thinking I would test them, but I just haven't gotten around to it. This one is called Pure. Organic, it calls itself a stevia blend, but once again, the number one ingredient is erythritol and then stevia, but no maltodextrin. This is a powder, as is this, and this is Truvia, and its ingredient is uh, erythritol and stevia. Again, erythritol number one, stevia number two. They all pretty much will put erythritol, they'll use more erythritol than stevia. I guess it's cheaper. I guess that's why they don't use stevia as much. So those are acceptable. These are acceptable for blood sugar spikes, virtually no spike. These 
not so much. In fact, not at all, really. And uh, these, not so much. And, and then lastly, I wanted to just share an interesting thing that one person recommended, which is the highly concentrated stevia. And that is here. It came in a a brown packet, so and it, it really wasn't the kind of a container that you would want to use too much. So I poured it into this little container that seemed to me a little bit more convenient. And it is a powder, a very fine powder of stevia. The thing that makes this unusual and kind of amazing is that it is highly concentrated. It's not twice as sweet as sugar. <laughs> it's not five times as sweet as sugar. I think it must be around 30 times as sweet as sugar. And when you want to put a little of this in your drink to sweeten it, you wouldn't put a teaspoon. You would gag on all the sweetness that would be involved, how sweet that thing, that drink would taste. You wouldn't put half a teaspoon. You wouldn't put a quarter of a teaspoon. You wouldn't put an eighth of a teaspoon. You'll just barely get your spoon with the edge of it with a, a little bit of, of this. It takes very little. Dump it in your coffee and you've got sweet coffee. It takes so little. So really, it's a little bit expensive to buy, but when you realize how little it takes to sweeten your drinks or whatever you want to sweeten, uh, it's, it's actually not a bad deal at all. And it's kind of fun. I had a big cup of coffee, I think it was last night, and I sweetened it with, with this highly concentrated stevia. And I'll put a link to that uh, if you're interested in it. I haven't learned how to do this affiliate thing, so it's not like I'm making any money on these right now. Maybe one of these days I'll figure it out. I just haven't taken the time. But anyway, I, I used just a little bit, and it was amazing. It was a big cup of coffee I had. And we put on a foils war, and my sister was here, and we were enjoying foils war, and I was drinking my coffee and having a nice time. And just with that little bit, I guess about a, I don't know, maybe a 30th of a teaspoon or something like that, it, it took a big old tumbler of coffee and sweetened it all up very nicely. So kind of an amazing product. And that, and this is pure stevia, just pure stevia. So nothing else at all. Anyway, those are some thoughts. I can't tell you what's going <laughs> to be the better for you nutritionally. I think most everybody agrees that stevia, erythritol, monk fruit, those are the more natural sweeteners that probably would be less trouble for your health and long range. Um, I don't worry too much about it, but I try to go with the natural stuff as much as possible. I know some of you may be saying, well, Dennis, you're just a wimp. I've gone whole hog into this keto thing. I don't sweeten anything. I don't have sweet coffee. I don't have sweet tea. I never have a sweet keto dessert. Uh, I'm done with sweetness. I'll never taste another sweet thing the rest of my life. <laughs> well, good for you. If you can do that, that's great. More power to you. But for the rest of us ordinary mortals, we like sweet things once in a while. And I'm not going to pretend that I don't. And the truth is, there are some people that if they're going to succeed in the kind of a diet to beat diabetes that they need to embrace, they're going to have to have some alternative sweet things once in a while, whether it's sweet, a little sweetness in their coffee or their tea or a little keto dessert. They're going to have to have something sweet once in a while. The good news is you can. You don't have to give up all sweetness and everything that tastes sweet. Uh, stevia, erythritol, monk fruit, swerve. There are different products that are not going to raise your blood sugar hardly at all. So I'm no nutritionist. I'm not going to say that they're all perfect. And, but even the, the ones that most of us look at as unnatural, like, uh, aspartame, zero on the glycemic index, sucralose, zero on the glycemic index, uh, saccharin, zero on the glycemic index. So if you want to say that these kind of things raise blood sugar, yeah, they do, but it's not the saccharin, it's not the aspartame, it's not the sucralose, it is the maltodextrin and perhaps dextrose may be in there as well. So that's what you have to watch. 
Okay, well, I hope this has been enjoyable and helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up. YouTube likes those thumbs up, and when they see enough of them, they'll promote that video to others. And of course, that's what we want. We want to get the word out. And I hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel so you'll be notified whenever we post new videos. Don't forget to click that bell. God bless. See you again soon.